Hey everyone, and welcome back to my completionist playthrough of the Baldur's Gate Saga with SCS. And as you can see, uh, in between episodes I've already prepared some gems for selling. Those are the gems uh, from the full gem bag that uh, Anaman has been carrying. We've been hoarding these gems for a while now, and uh, we're going to be able to sell them for a total of 11,000 gold, so pretty nice. And we still have that useless Harper amulet that we need to get rid of. Alright, and before we rest, there's actually a few things I wanted to take care of still. Uh, we're going to go back to the Temple District, because I think we're going to be able to witness another scene with Garrick trying to use his bardic charms on Lady Erlana. <laughs> As you can see, also some uh, enhanced edition NPCs uh, have uh, trouble uh, staying dead sometimes, so in order to, um, in an effort <laughs> to uphold some consistency in the playthrough, we're just going to kill Dorn again. And stay dead, Dorn. Okay, and here we go. Garrick's at it again. Undeterred. Another episode of this epic saga with Lady Erlana, Garrick, and Sirando. And Sirando, of course, providing Garrick with some nice lines that he's going to promptly fumble over. <laughs> I am yawn struck by your nobility. What I would not do to spend an evening in your barns. Did you now, good sir? And what makes you think you'd be worthy to spend an, an evening in my arms? Well, it's easy, I... Uh... Why not tell her how handsome and studly I am, Sarando? <laughs> anyway, I only desire you that you see past my faults and give me pants. Give you pants, good sir. Are you perchance missing a pair? Well, perhaps a gnome fellow standing behind our good Garrick has the answer to that. What say you, sir gnome? He's going to be like, eek, discovered, run for it, boy. But this is not the end of it all. Yes. <laughs> uh, later on, we're going to be able to see what uh, comes next. But since we're here, we can also hand in this quest to Dawnbringer Sign. Sane. Whichever you prefer. You return triumphant with the Dawn Ring, of course. Your service has been exceptional. I wish you were a member of our temple. You would have been a fine cleric had your life taken another path. So this is yet another inf uh, reference to the fact that if you play a good aligned cleric, you would be able to become a member of uh, this temple, and that would be your cleric stronghold. And um, we get some experience for it, a thousand gold, and that's basically it when it comes to these quests. There's, of course, still the big Unseeing Eye questline, but we're going to get that to that uh, later on. And also, speaking of strongholds, I haven't really uh, said that directly yet, I think, but uh, basically the reason we got uh, that Dearnese Keep, the fighter stronghold, offered to us is because we are Kensai, we are still part Kensai, and uh, that is a fighter kit, of course. And all fighters, barbarians, and monks get offered um, to, uh, you know, get a hold of uh, that uh, Dearnese Keep. And also, since we're here, I would like to direct some attention to this guarded compound here. It's a pretty big, mysterious building, uh, with a very, very notable encounter inside. And um, there's never really any good reason to, like, go there. Because there is only one reference to... As far as my knowledge goes, there's only one reference to that building in the whole game. And uh, we're actually going to see it soon. Uh, once we progress the time. Uh, because uh, once we uh, rest one more time. Uh, it's going to be over 24 hours since the funeral of uh, Lord Dearnese, and another event in uh, Nalia's questline is going to happen. And um, actually before we rest we can use her identify spells, have a studded leather plus two, have a cloak of protection plus one, bracers of defense AC6, and we can also give her this uh, wand of uh, lightning, another wand from that lich guarding Daystar, and we also have uh, three uses of our glasses of identification, so let's get that harp, the ring of invisibility, and the wand of frost. We can identify with those. So here we have another invisibility ring. And we have this harp of discord that only bards can use, and it uh, allows us to cast confusion three times per day. And, uh, you know, we will eventually be able to use it with Kirinai once she gets that high level ability use any item. Although at that point having, you know, casting confusion is just not going to be that great of a thing to do. I think I'm still going to just hold on to it. 
Uh, anyway, also when it comes to Nalia's stuff, we need to sell a couple of things. What do you have for us, Nalia? I'm going to have to hold on to this cloak. I'm rearranging some stuff here because uh, we're not going to have Nalia for much longer. We'll see how many wands can go into Edwin's inventory. All of them, actually. That's very nice. And this twig and bow we can stack in there. And, uh, yeah, that's basically it. Actually, uh, basically what's going to happen is that we're going to lose Nally and all of her items are going to be dumped onto our other characters. So that's why I'm uh, rearranging all of that. And also, you know, since uh, I think we're done with uh, stealing for a while, I also wanted to just uh, quickly mention a couple of things, a couple of like interesting things when it comes to pickpocketing and, and all that. And generally it seems like, it's pretty interesting in the Forgotten Realms of universe, it seems like the concept of uh, thieving is like more normalized, more accepted, I guess the, the existence of it. Because you have like officially, uh, like official uh, thief guilds in different cities, you also have bards having the pickpocketing skill, so they're not only like musicians, I guess, but also they like to help themselves to some goodies on their, on their shows, I guess. It's also, uh, speaking more in game mechanics terms, it's also interesting how, uh, you know, we can break into someone's home and open their locked and trapped chest and like retrieve whatever is inside there, and it's not considered stolen. However, if you use stealing in a merchant's menu, then it is going to be, and you have to find a fence to sell that kind of item. And uh, finally, and just I think all uh, Infinity Engine games uh, make use of pickpocketing in like different ways to help you in some quests or uh, allow you to obtain some unique items actually that you wouldn't be able to obtain otherwise, or at least uh, until much much later in the game, especially in Icewind Dale the first one, you can get some really cool, unique items from uh, just stealing from people in Kuldahar, for example, which I'm going to showcase once we get to Icewind Dale at uh, some point in the future. Anyway, I think now we can just rest to progress the time. Okay, and now once we get outside, something is going to happen. Nalia, I would ask that you drop this foolishness at once and return to your proper duties. Honor the commitment you made to me. So Isaiah Ronald shows up with all of these guards. I made my opinion of you quite clear, Isaiah. I will not change my mind now. Then I have little choice but to forcefully show you the error of your ways. Nalia de Arnis, I place you under arrest by order of the Amnian army. What? You are a danger to yourself and your lands. You have not been thinking straight since your father died. It is for your own good. Who are you to decide that? By what right? I have every right. I am an officer in the army and a liaison to the nobility. It is my function to see that everyone is well in their proper station. You have demonstrated that you are under some strange influence and I must act to protect you. This is madness! Madness. <laughs> Senashiro will stop you. No, she will not. I act with full sanction of the military. Even if you were the type to attack guards, you would not survive the result. No, I am simply going to walk away and there is nothing you can do. So these responses are a little emotional, but let's go with this one. Yeah, I will secrete her away so that you and your ilk can no longer poison her mind. Don't take it so hard. I am just better than you. Oh, feel free to lodge a complaint to the proper authority. That would be me. So a very nice system of checks and balances they have over there. <laughs> and at least for once, Anaman actually talks some sense. But anyway, we're going to have a solution to our problem appearing right away. <laughs> oh, <laughs> did you see that beggar sliding there? <laughs> that was so... <laughs> that was pretty cool. You don't see that every day. <laughs> uh, anyway, here comes Keller Amson. A, uh, a member of the city guard, actually. <laughs> we'll see once we're done with... Uh, this conversation, what's going to happen to this beggar, if he's going to stay in his place or travel further. <laughs> anyway, so uh, he's not going to want to be overheard, and he apparently has some info for us. I know a way to get back at Isaiah, one that will hurt him deeply. 
Isaiah is quite corrupt and more than willing to exercise his power. You are not monitored as we, so you can do something that I or another guard cannot. Look to the docks and a man named Barg. Examine him and what he does, and you are sure to see what I mean. You might also wish to pry into his personal records. They may reveal something of his fondness for gems. I did not tell you this, and I certainly did not say his records are in his home northwest of the main government building in the government district. Should anyone ask, I also wasn't the one who arranged to have the door to Isaiah's estate unbarred. <laughs> I, love, I love that line. I certainly did not say his records are in his home. <laughs> I cannot tell you more. They will question me if we are seen together. Remember, Isaiah values his name over all else. Sully that, and his life is in your hands. Yeah, and then we're supposed to report to Korgig Axehand, uh, Isaiah's superior, his commander. All right, so <laughs> that's it when it comes to that beggar. But that was a that was quite a show. <laughs> that was pretty cool. So anyway, we're going to go and investigate these leads right away. First, we're going to talk to Barg in front of the sea's bounty. Speed, it will be done. He's a jolly fellow that had a little bit too much to drink. And if we just talk to him casually, he's going to to uh, spill some information for us. Yeah, apparently he has a business arrangement with uh, Isaiah Ronald, it seems. Isaiah foots the bill. He's a right gent, if a bit too much uh, fop in the bridges. Want me to set you up with a job? And he apparently finances pirating, which Barg is uh, pretty proud of his occupation here. Keeps the merchants on their toes. <laughs> Of course, that Isaiah is into other things too, but me and the boys don't go in for slavery and such. <laughs> so it seems there's way more to Isaiah. Me? I've never talked to that slaver contact, Dirth. Hey, what do you suppose they pay to get the guard to look the other way? Must be thousands to overlook it. Wow, that's a lot. Anyway, I've never even talked to Dirth, even though I spent hours in the sea's bounty. Ain't even far from here. So, we're done here. We got all of the information that we needed. Thank you very much, Barg and get the hell away before I kill you. <laughs> anyway, so we're going to visit the Seas Bounty, and we've already seen uh, Officer Dearth before, and he's not much of an obstacle, but I am going to switch Karen I to her ranged weapons. Now with Officer Dearth, no matter how we conduct this uh, conversation, it's always going to end up in a fight. We can tell him about Isaiah Rono, and uh, he says that we shouldn't really know of him, he would never divulge such information to us. And also he recognizes us, since we've done a certain quest line. Wait a moment, I do know you. Oh, but you have some nerve to show your face to me. You killed Captain Hagen. You were clearly described to me. Come for another slaver, have you? Well, I not go without a fight. So of course Captain Hagen was the leader in that uh, slums hideout that the slavers had. Yes. And we disposed of him much earlier in the playthrough. Right, and that's that's it for him. He managed to actually dish out some damage. Oh yeah, and also we have this short sword from Nalia and the arrows. And we automatically got that uh, gear from her, and I forgot to sell these these things. Uh, anyway, we have a full plate from Officer Dearth, which is pretty nice, and we get this note. Isaiah's slavery document. Apparently that uh, contains a register of slaves recently sold to this outpost of slave lords located in the Temple District. So this, although pretty vague, is a reference to that guarded compound, I think, in the game. And uh, this also provides you a cool like role-playing opportunity or a reason to actually go in and investigate that building. Because normally when you enter there, you can have a little conversation with the owners that ask you to leave because they want their privacy. And normally you don't really have much of a reason to you know, barge in in there and uh, a look around, but here, now that we've obtained this note uh, about some slaver activity uh, and, you know, them having some kind of an outpost in the temple district, this is a pretty cool reason to actually go in there and investigate. So yeah, we have this piece of evidence against Isaiah now, but this is not all. We're going to uh, check out the other clues that we've gotten. So now uh, the estate of uh, Isaiah Ronald is going to be open. If it must be done. Yes, it will be done. Nothing to it. There's going to be some random goodies in these chests and in this container. There's a certain 
a certain item that's uh, going to be very important. Here are uh, his financial statements, and uh, apparently there are a number of gem and jewel transactions, though not from any local dealer. On inspection, the importation prices are far below market value, and while you are no accountant, it would seem that an effort has been made to get around local tariffs. So now we have all we need to report to uh, Korgig Axe Hand inside the main building and uh, see what he thinks about all of what we've been able to uh, discover about Isaiah. Certainly. Is there a reason you are here? You should make an appointment to request an audience or speak directly with Officer Rowanall. Yeah, and you should uh, examine him a bit closer. First we can tell him about Nalia. And it's his opinion she is hardly to be considered innocent by default. I also have it on authority of Isaiah Ronal that Nalia was distraught after the death of her father and that he has placed her under his care as a protective measure. I am afraid it is his word against yours and no matter what you think Nalia has said of her motivations, Isaiah is the more credible claimant. Um, anyway, we can also tell him about that pirate barg apparently being financed by Isaiah. This is not going to go anywhere. Barg is a known scoundrel. His testimony is questionable. You can also tell him about the smuggling of gems. This may have been a simple clerical error. Combined with other charges, it might warrant an inquiry, but alone it does not. So we also have that slaver document. Any hint of association with the slave trade can ruin a man, and your claims are all circumstantial, but there is enough here to warrant investigating officially. Remember that nothing is proven. Any number of factors could place his insignia there and not directly involve him. Whatever the truth is, we will be sure to expose it. It will take some time to fully investigate, but we should know tomorrow if an inquiry is warranted. I suggest you return then. If the allegations you have made are true, we owe you a debt. Such bad apples are a very destructive influence on our effectiveness. And anyway, this is going to happen immediately. Good of the garrison is my concern. Like he already reviewed the matter. The indignity. Also, it seems like this guy is Isaiah Ronal, but this is the secretary. Uh, Isaiah Ronal is right here. <laughs> so this is kind of like a, a bug, I guess, or an error, that it seems like it is him talking. You have not been wrong here, Isaiah. There has been no slander, if the allegations are true. Need I remind you how respected I am? I am Isaiah Ronal. So you can kind of see what kind of uh, person he is and how much his reputation matters to him. Yeah, the matter is closed until further investigation. Nalia, you are free to go. Isaiah, you are not to leave Athkatla. An outrage. Don't whine, Isaiah. It makes you seem even less of a man. This is not over by any means. So yeah, the proper Isaiah leaves Thank with. Thank you for your help. You have helped me again. And I am grateful. <laughs> didn't really, <laughs> didn't want to talk over her. But yeah, Isaiah and Korge leave. And uh, we can uh, rejoin Nalia into our party. And we are going to do so just for a moment. We're yes. just going to leave her at a more appropriate uh, place. Because now I think is going to be the time to uh, go and progress and do another big quest line. Uh, the one involving the Planner Sphere. And for that, I'm going to obtain Valigar, a different party member. And uh, for that, we're going to go to Umar Hills. But on our way, we're going to stop by Dierney's Hold, Dierney's Keep, Quickly whichever you some. prefer. I am completely set in my ways of calling it the Dierney's Keep. <laughs> um, it? Anyway, we're going to place Analia here. There's a pretty cool, like, um, role playing justification for it, you know, here. Uh, it's it's her home. Here she is going to be safe from the Rowanals. And this is actually where she normally is if you don't have her in, in uh, your party. If you just free the, the keep of the, uh, you know, defeat the troll invasion, she's going to be here. So it, it's like the most fitting place for her to stay outside of our party, I think. And also we can take a look at her accomplishments. Uh, four kills. Apparently he man she managed to deliver the killing blow upon the Umber Hulk Elder. That's basically it. So now is the time to uh, get rid of her. Shall we continue on? 
or has this ended our travels? And wait here now, yeah? Yes, this is an appropriate spot done. for you. And yeah, there's no one to see us uh, to see us yet. Okay. So now we can proceed into the Umar Hills to what the village it? of Imnisvale. It will be done. We have some time where we should be able to uh, see what's up and do some uh, early exploration here. Oi, Mayor. When is this crisis going to be solved, eh? Aye, me and mine need to get back to herding, we do. For the wolves have gobbled me flock entire. Um, calm down, everyone, please. I assure you that everything that can be done is being done. Oi, Mayor. <laughs> yeah, apparently the Mayor has already hired a group of adventurers. But uh, they have not come back yet. So we are not the first to investigate the troubles here, it seems. And uh, apparently these villagers here are in dire straits, and saying that they have to flee. And Minister Lloyd doesn't, <laughs> doesn't seem to be the most charismatic person here. Yeah, we're looking for another group of ad adventurers to handle the situation. So this is where uh, we will come in. And uh, they've mentioned a... Uh, should it be a flock of wolves or a, a pack of wolves? I think they they should call it. But anyway, uh, one of them mentioned the wolves. This one is going to mention some ogres and evil kin. Apparently, being the source of the troubles. Yeah, this guy Nelik says it's the wolves. And uh, the third theory about who's behind these troubles th these people are dealing with is uh, Umar, the Witch of Legend. Yeah, he also mentioned uh, a, a ranger protector of this village, Mirella, that uh, apparently was trying to track down the source of these murders, but uh, she's also been gone. Of course, as always, feel free to pause and, and read everything in detail. So yeah, this little scene is going to be over. They are all going to go to their normal posts. Speak. I find the great outdoors chaotic and dirty. It needs a shaping will to slap the beasts into proper order. <laughs> slap those beasts. Anyway, here we can talk to Nelik and to get some initial information. He's a guard. And uh, yeah, the troubles. Uh, he is of the mindset that it must be the wolves. Apparently for weeks now they've been preying on the villagers, sneaking into the village at night and tearing people apart, and then their bodies disappear the next night. It's a gruesome sight, to be sure. I've seen them too. The wolves look at me f from afar with smarts in their eyes. Yeah, them ogres, i seen them, and they ain't so bad. And the Umar stuff is nothing but a load of no nonsense. Yeah, he mentions that the mayor already hired a halfling runt and her troop to find out what's been happening. They haven't come back. So that's the adventuring party that was mentioned. Yeah, why would the wolves, you know, like, uh, come back to take away the bodies? Don't rightly know. Ain't nothing natural, that's for sure. Yeah, the uh, ogres apparently belong to a big rebel army. And I'm going to elaborate more on that later. Apparently just some deserters want to be left alone, led by a big ogre fellow, Madolf. Wants to be left alone. The fact that he'd talk first rather than kill you makes him not the worst sword in my books. And the Umar is a local legend. Apparently we're directed to Vincenzo, that's uh, going to know more about it. And yeah, that's basically the uh, the initial kind of situation here. And, you know, before we really delve deeper into all this, uh, let's just... Um, which I think we're going to, like, investigate all that properly in the next episode. But here we have some unfinished business from a different quest chain uh, with uh, Rejek, or I guess a Regik uh, Heidsman, the tanner from uh, the bridge district in Afkatla, uh, and the skin dancing business and all that that uh, we've dealt with in Trade Meet. But of course, uh, he had that note in his home in the bridge district uh, that uh, was sent by this guy, Fail, uh, to uh, seek him out 
and uh, they had this elaborate scheme there uh, that uh, using the name Valendan and uh, rearranging the letters according to the instructions in that note we would basically have to first buy the book History of the Zentarum from him and then uh, tell him uh, the name he was operating and before I guess uh, the name he was operating like under I guess or using a certain name right so uh, he actually has some other stuff we can't steal from him we could buy some of these uh, potions but we're not going to we're just going to purchase that history of the Zentarum book You'll find no better prices and now he has a uh, different conversation with us you have made an interesting selection you know I used to peddle books in Athcatla under another name perhaps you were a customer call me by the name I used before and perhaps I will have a discount for you so if you rearrange the names uh, in the proper order it's Darsin Cole indeed indeed it was as I said in the letter I am sorry for these simple games merely a ruse to throw off the foolish guards of Athcatla I trust you have the armor almost complete of course the the skin kind of armor and uh, basically we can follow through with this and this is basically kind of like an evil thing to do and that is going to require us to procure a, a blood of a silver dragon and there is there is one later in the game and silver dragons are good aligned and we're not we are not going to kill her and provide him with the blood so there wouldn't really be any like um, other uh, conclusion to it so we're just going to say this you monster you would deal with someone that makes armor from skin and he's going to attempt to leave but hopefully we're going to be able to kill him before he does that All right. and this is kind of you know just the ending to that whole quest line <clears throat> because if we proceeded with that uh, conversation further you know we would uh, he would tell us about the need to procure the the blood of a silver dragon to make some finishing touches to that skin armor and uh, we basically you know would be able to like agree or disagree to it but I find it more like uh, appropriate for someone like Sanashira to respond here that we have found this contact of Regix and we are able to deal with him before they were able to uh, do anything uh, evil I guess and trying to complete that armor all right and here we have some merchants and uh, we can ask them as well about the killings and they're all going to have a different opinion Yeah, she is of the mindset that th this is the work of these wolves. I am just going to quickly sell some of this stuff to her. This full plate mail I think I'm, we are going to hold on to for certain party members that we're going to recruit uh, later on. And she just has some basic stuff. All of these merchants do. Find no better prices in I guarantee it. Yeah, he's going to think uh, that it's the ogres. They're evil and brutal. He has some armors and not much more. And here, Min Minling, uh, his attitude is uh, something that I do not like, <laughs> but we have to uh, have to persist here. Yeah, he doesn't want to have uh, anything to do with uh, the local concerns, and he actually has some pretty cool potions, and we could actually just uh, rob him of these potions. But it would be like more trouble than it's worth because uh, we would have to like gulp, you know, to be safe, to have our pickpocketing uh, higher, uh, you know, as high as possible to, you know, guarantee success except that 1% of failure. Uh, we would have to, you know, probably use like four or five potions of Master Thievery uh, only to receive two from this stealing spree. And, you know, these potions of genius or potions of fire resistance or the potions of agility are cheap enough so I'm just going to buy from him although just for his attitude <laughs> I, I would like steal from him normally I think but um, anyway let's just buy a couple of these we don't need the potions of genius from him and I might just get these potions of fire resistance All right <laughs> this is also you know something that you can do something that we have done to our Ledrian at the beginning of our playthrough you know like you can access his goods like why would these merchants sell potions of master thievery you can be like you know come up to the counter in their shop for example and you would be like can I have a potion of master thievery please <laughs> and then just like once you get it once you buy it you just drink it right in front of him without breaking eye contact <laughs> and then and then after that you're like all right buddy what do you have in stock there <laughs> So, yeah, that's that's a pretty funny thought. 
Uh, anyway. Now we're done with that. And I think, uh, yeah, we're going to explore uh, this, uh, this village and the surrounding areas in the next episode. We're going to do some minor quests and then obtain Valigar and go back to Atkatla to do the Planar Sphere before we really deep uh, or dive deeper into this whole questline. But anyway, uh, I thank you for watching this episode. I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you next time.